Now let us prove part b of our theorem, namely that uh, any function a, uh, from an inner product space into the extended real line, which is proper, convex, and lower semi-continuous, is the pointwise supremum of um, of, of, of the affine minor ends. I call this bond by supremum f tilde of x and this is um, defined as the supremum overall ax plus alpha such that a is in the space, alpha is a real number and for all y you have a y plus alpha less or equal than f of y. So this as a function of x is an affine minor, minor end of f. Okay, so now if we set in x here, so instead of y, we see since x is also an element of h, any of these functions in the supremum um, satisfy that uh, this at the point x at the point x is less or equal than f of x. So since um, any function in the supremum is an a fine minor end, meaning that the, this function is less than uh, the function, uh, less than f. Um, we have f tilde of x less or equal than f of x for all x in h. By the way, this, uh, this equality here um, should also hold for all x in h, um, this equality here. Okay, now um, to show the other direction, we assume that this does not hold for all x in h. So assume that there exists some designated x bar in H such that um, this, this um, inequality here is satisfied not with equality but with a strict inequality meaning that such that f tilde x bar strictly less than f of x bar means that there exists some uh, some number, some real number, uh, which we can put in between, so that we um, we we this also holds for all the cases where f tilde of x bar is minus infinity or f of x tilde is plus infinity. We can always find. Um, a real number in between those two, uh, those two things here, and this is important because we will use this real number, and it's and for this usage, it's, it's important that this is a real number. So there exists a real number which we can put in between. So f tilde x bar less than r less than f of x bar. Okay, so now we have um, this. So since r is less than f of uh, r bar, of course, is less than f of x bar, we have that, oops, that's not what I wanted. We have that, we have here some point which is not in the epigraph of f. Um, so we have x bar, r bar is not in the epigraph of f. What does this mean? 
uh, this point is not in the epigraph of f, therefore we can separate it st strongly from the epigraph. So since this holds and epi f is uh, non-empty, convex, and closed. Um, the strong separation theorem guarantees the existence of, and now call this A alpha in H times R, so a pair, same space as the epigraph. The epigraph also consists of pairs, um, with, and now, infimum Overall, y s in epi f. Here we use the inner product between those two. So, a y plus alpha s. And this infimum should be strictly greater than um, the thing which is uh, inner product with the thing which is not in the epigraph. So, a x bar plus alpha r bar. Okay, the first thing we did in the in the in part a of the proof was um, determine the sign of alpha. Um, we will also do this here because we also have to we will have to divide by alpha. Um, now there are three cases. Um, uh, we will see that. Um, the first case that alpha is less than zero is um, uh, simply impossible because um, then um, ah, we, we can draw a picture so that we can see this more easily. If we have the epigraph of f here and some plane here, we will always have that this vector a alpha points, which we constructed here, points towards the epigraph. If it would point downwards, then it would point away from the epigraph, and this uh, is not compatible with this uh, thing here, since the epigraph is, is uh, unbounded from above. Um, what can happen instead, besides um, some strictly larger alpha, is that we have a separating hyperplane like this, some vertical hyperplane, such that A of alpha um, this the normal vectors a alpha with alpha equals zero, and we have to deal with this case because this can happen, um, and we cannot just um, dismiss this. Um, so we have three cases. Case one, this is the kind of more trivial case which we can immediately dismiss. Um, alpha less than zero. Um, so, um, then take some y, dot, uh, y bar in the domain of f, and then we can take s bar um, greater or equal than um, f of s, which means that um, uh, f of y bar, of course, sorry. Better. So f of y bar, and this means that um, y bar s bar is in epi f. What does this mean? Now we can we can put in this special element of the epigraph of f here. The infimum is certainly less or equal than uh, this expression with this uh, strict with this special element here. So we can continue this uh, chain of inequalities um, to this side. I guess in the video this might still be the left-hand side. Uh, it's the left-hand side for me at least. 
Um, yeah, it must be. Um, so we have a y bar plus alpha s bar greater than a x bar plus alpha r bar, which means that um, since we can divide by s now, this means uh, we divide by alpha. <laughs> Sorry, divide by alpha, and alpha is less than zero. We have to switch this, the 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 ordering relation here. So we have s bar less than r bar um, plus, I guess, yeah, plus one over alpha. Um, um, and now we have a x bar minus y bar. Okay, so we have s bar is less than a real number for all s bar, uh, for, for all um, s bar greater or equal than f of y bar. This is a contradiction. So contradiction. So since we have taken s bar greater or equal than f of y bar in, an, in arbitrarily, uh, uh, that this, this thing can't hold. There can't be an upper limit um, to this. So contradiction to arbitrary choice of um, s bar greater or equal than f of y bar. Okay, this concludes case one. We got a contradiction, so case one cannot be true. Um, we have to find the contradiction for all the cases, so let's continue with um, case two. Um, case two will be um, alpha greater than zero. We have already had this case basically in um, in in part part A, and therefore this case two will be kind of parallel and kind of yeah more or less trivial now. Um, what do we have then? So um, take x oh, basic oh no we have we have called this y here so we can stick to y so take y in the domain of f this means that the pair y f of y is in the epigraph of f okay so this means now we have this um, for all um, for all for all elements in the epigraph, we have this relation. We have, in, in particular, this special element in the epigraph. So we have a y plus alpha s greater than a x bar plus alpha r bar. Okay, and the only variable here is, um, uh, it's not s, it's f of y here, since we have taken this special element in the epigraph. So alpha f of y greater than, okay. So now uh, we have again alpha times something, and we can divide by alpha, which means that we have f of y greater than, okay, so um, greater than, and now we have to divide by alpha, and we have r bar plus a x bar minus y. And this is for all y in the domain of f. So whenever y is not in the domain of f, then f of y is plus infinity. 
and therefore the right hand side is plus infinity, the, le uh, the left hand side is plus infinity, the right hand side is some real number. Um, all these elements are real numbers, our bar is a real number, as we said here, and this inner product is certainly real. So this inequality holds trivially for y not in the domain of f. What do we have now since, uh, since we have this for y in domain of f, y not in domain of f, we have f of y greater than um, r bar plus a x bar minus y and I have forgotten to divide by by alpha so it's 1 over alpha, alpha times this inner product and I have to also correct this here let's just do it like this so again it's the same expression So for all y in h, so if we call this here h of y, this is an affine function, so h is an affine minorand of f. So h is contained in this set. H is an affine minorand of f. So whenever you set a here to, so a in this supremum to minus 1 over alpha y, uh, sorry, minus 1 over alpha a um, in the inner product with y, plus alpha equals r bar plus 1 over alpha x bar, uh, inner product with a. Uh, so if you set this alpha to this uh, to this uh, this constant term which does not be uh, does not depend on y, the constant term in this h, um, then you get an affine minorand and the, this condition here tells you precisely that it is contained in so that it yeah it, it, it goes into the supremum here. It is contained in this set. okay. So, we have this, and now the question is, what is h of x bar? Okay, h of x bar is r bar plus 1 over alpha a x bar minus x bar, which is r bar. So, um, since f tilde is the supremum of all um, affine minorands, we have um, f tilde of x bar um, greater or equal than, it's the supremum, so it's certainly greater or equal than if you put in this h here, h of x bar, and h of x bar is equal to r bar, and this is a contradiction, and uh, the contradiction is uh, this here. We have that f tilde of x is less than r and not greater or equal than r, so this is a contradiction to uh, to this uh, uh, equation x clam. Okay, this was case two. So here you see minus um, a over alpha is also the normal vector here. So this is very parallel to part a. Let's now look at case three. Alpha equals zero. So this means again, um, take y in the domain of f, 
then you have this element in the epigraph. Uh, actually, so if alpha equals zero, the problem is the, the th second component doesn't matter because it's, it will be multiplied with zero. So you have the infimum over y in the domain of f and f of y is in, in uh, is uh, y f of y the pair is then in the epigraph. So a y plus uh, zero, alpha is equal to zero, f of y greater than a x bar plus alpha r bar. All right, now we have this here. So we have the infimum over y in dom f, a y, and now we, we can even uh, t uh, put this on the other side here, this a x bar on the other side, then we get this. So this is greater than zero, and we can call this epsilon. This is a number which is greater than zero. Um, by part A, there exists a pair B beta in H times R, such that um, F of Y is greater or equal than by plus beta for all y in h. Part a says that there exists an affine minor n, and now we can we can apply this. We can just write that there is some b beta um, such that um, f of f of y is, is greater than this affine minor n here. Okay, and now we can um, we can we can combine these inequalities here. We have this, so we have whenever um, whenever um, y is an element in the domain of f, then a y minus x is, um, since this is the infimum, this is certainly always um, um, always. So, so the infimum is epsilon, the infimum over all these expressions. So if you have one of these expressions for some y in, dom in the domain of f, then you are certainly greater or equal than this infimum, which is epsilon, okay? So um, you have for all y in the domain of f, and in fact, we will see that, um, yeah, domain of f is important. Um, yeah, okay. We have um, a y minus x is greater or equal than epsilon. Now we can we can add this. So we can add this for all y in the domain of f. We have y of a, uh, f of y greater or equal than, um, bring this to the other side. So we have b plus, if we, if we multiply this with some gamma greater or equal than zero, still holds, um, gamma epsilon here. So if we write, b plus gamma a, um, b minus gamma a, since we have to put this on the other side, plus uh, um, b minus gamma a in a product with y. Okay, we have this, bring it to the other side. So b minus gamma a in a product with y, then we have the thing with the 
So we have gamma a um, x bar plus gamma epsilon and plus b. So we have multiplied this with gamma. We have added this to this inequality and I hope this should be this or something very similar. Let's check b y plus beta and then we have gamma epsilon and we have gamma uh, minus gamma a y. Yeah, looks good. And we have plus gamma a x bar. Looks, looks good. So we have this. This is also an affine minorand and now we can choose. We have some freedom in gamma. Gamma is something which is greater or equal than zero. So choose gamma as the maximum of zero. Um, and now we have to we have to calculate a little bit. We we want to we want to make this so that this affine minorand is again um, greater or equal than r bar. It might be greater or equal than bar already when we said gamma equal to zero. Um, but if not, then we can make it just just bigger. And then uh, um, the way how to do this is so if we if if we said y equal to x bar here, then we have minus gamma a x bar plus gamma a x bar. So these terms cancel out. These will not be visible uh, later. And we have gamma epsilon plus beta and b x bar. And we want this to be, um, we want this to be r bar. This is the thing here. Um, <laughs> Uh, so let's set this to r bar minus beta minus beta minus b y uh, no sorry b x bar there's also some number um, and divide this by epsilon. And magically, you will see if you define this as h of y, then you will see h of x bar will be greater or equal than since uh, um, since h of x bar is equal to uh, uh, b minus gamma a x bar plus gamma a x bar. So these things go out. Plus gamma epsilon um, there is no gamma left, so this is the only term where gamma appears. You multiply it with epsilon, epsilon is greater than zero. So you can just add r bar minus beta minus dx bar. And then you add beta, uh, this last term. Yeah, then a lot of terms disappear. We have bx bar minus bx bar, we have minus beta beta, and this is again r bar. So we have found an affine minor end, um, which is greater or equal than r bar, and this is also a contradiction to equation x clam. And this concludes the proof.